Ground vibrations are generated either through natural means or man-made activities. Natural phenomena such as earthquakes strike without notice, shaking the earth by producing large magnitudes of ground vibrations. While man-made activities are lower in magnitude and are generated from either passing of vehicles or construction works such as pile driving, it is becoming a growing concern as many of these operations are being done in urban areas where many structures are within close proximity to the project site. Pile driving equipment, specifically hydraulic impact hammers or mean heavy machines that drive the 23 meter long pile down the soft soil to transfer heavy loads from the structures to the ground. The impact hammer pounds the pile to the earth without mercy where its 7.1 tons ram slams down at the rate of 5 blows per foot. Abuse from the hammer is not the only thing that the pile must withstand. Deeper soil produces higher load-bearing capacity, having denser soil which leads to greater energy inducing ground vibrations. Ground vibrations produced from impact pile driving may seem to be a small threat to quite a number of people nowadays, but their impact on the surroundings should be given a careful consideration, wherein upon reaching a certain magnitude it could cause discomfort to occupants in nearby buildings, damaging of vibration sensitive facilities and equipment, and could also ultimately lead to structural damage. Many vibration limits were set to mitigate the negative effects of ground vibrations and methods of predicting vibration magnitudes are being extensively studied and improved for on-site usage. However, the models are either too simple or too complicated to be used effectively prior to the commencement of pile driving operations. There is still then the need to improve studies on their application, specifically on the level of risks to damage that it can bring to neighboring structures. The study then revolves around the concept of understanding the relationship between the influence of different soil types on the attenuation of ground vibrations and the vulnerability of structures within the vicinity of the site to structural damage if exposed to these ground vibrations. A brief run through on the methodology of this research is discussed my fellow friends. Three sites were chosen for the study and three accelerometers were positioned at 3, 15 and 30 meters away from the pile. Three sets of vibration measurements were recorded, only on the ground surface, and stored at each site on these devices. Measurements were obtained in terms of the peak particle velocity, a unit that is used to describe small-scale ground vibrations. Time histories were then generated for further analysis through a strong motion analysis tool named SCREAM, and the frequency of vibration was analyzed in the Fourier spectra. The mentioned methodology would later on piece together to aid in the analysis of the study. The data shows that at the 3 meter distance, larger magnitudes of PPV were obtained when the pile was being driven in the sand layers as compared to silt layers. This can be attributed to the presence of different soil properties. But what was interesting to see is that the vibration magnitudes dispersed at a broad range only at the 3 meter distance, but at 15 and 30 meter distances, they clustered to a much closer range regardless of the type of soil the vibrations were emitted from. This can be more clearly seen on the attenuation graph or the decrease in magnitude as distance from the source increases. This behavior was found on both the sand and silt layers, a very interesting finding. Another important parameter in the study is the frequency of vibration, which is known to be the number of times it takes for a complete cycle of movement to happen in a single second. The frequency is found to be linearly dependent on the rate of attenuation, which is why it was obtained. But our journey doesn't end here, my friends. Svinkin suggested a model capable of predicting the dominant vibration frequency by knowing pile hammer specs and properties. Percentage errors less than 10% were obtained when the predicted and actual frequencies of Site A were compared. Frequencies can then be predicted with considerable accuracy prior to the start of a pile driving activity. But again, it doesn't end here, my very dear friends. Based on the defined attenuation behavior, two vibration prediction models were formulated from the regression analysis of the data obtained in Site A, with frequency and the distance away from the source as input parameters. R square values of 0.94 and 0.86 were obtained respectively for the sand and silt models. The models were then validated with the data on sites B and C 
and a satisfactory correlation was found to exist between the predicted and actual values. If the models were to be used in conjunction with the vibration limits proposed by Athanasopoulos and Pelekis, structures that are vulnerable to structural damage within a radius of the pad driving source can be determined, making it possible to map out risks that can be utilized to prevent damages from occurring. Now, we can apply the results through the following steps. First, obtain a borehole data of the pile driving site you are considering. Using the borehole data, check with the limitations of the proposed model to verify if the model is applicable for the particular site. The predominantly sand and silt layers in the site should have a minimum individual layer thickness of at least 0.75 meters. The formulated model can only be used to predict vibration emissions on the ground surface at least 15 meters from the source. Vibration should be emitted through impact pile driving using hydraulic hammer. And the energy imparted by the hammer onto the pile should be within the range of 41,000 to 41,130 joules. Next, we calculate the frequency of the vibration using the Sphinkins model. The peak particle velocity can now be calculated by knowing the frequency and the horizontal distance from the source to the point being considered. Using the chart of threshold values for vibration, we can identify what type of structures are affected at a certain peak particle velocity. And then, just tabulate the results. In order for planners, engineers, and building officials to better utilize the results, a zone of influence map can be made to determine what type of structures are susceptible to damage within a certain radius from the pad driving site. The extent of damage these small scale vibrations can bring to structures is huge. Because of this, the safety of the people near pile driving sites has been a concern for more than 50 years. Which is why studies and measures of mitigating the negative impact it has on the environment are being conducted and treated seriously. This would explain the provisions of several codes to fully safeguard the environment. In this research, focus and importance was placed on the relationship between the effect of the soil conditions and the vibration magnitude obtained on the ground surface and its attenuation behavior as it moves further away from the vibration source, while other studies did not dwell on the influence of the soil properties on the attenuation behavior of vibrations. This study is mainly intended for engineers, construction companies, and government officials. However, the proprietor may also benefit from this in the sense that it can prevent delays in the projects that would have otherwise been brought about by complaints of nearby residents resulting from disturbances and damages in a certain structure. 